Guys, the laptop you see on the screen right now is a 1GB RAM laptop, and I am running Kali Linux on it, that too in dual boot. Now, you all probably know what Kali Linux is and what it's used for, otherwise, you wouldn't have clicked on this video. But how to install it and set up a dual boot is what we are going to learn in today's video. So let's move to the computer screen and practically understand the whole process. Let's roll. All right. I'm back on my PC screen, and today I'll be installing Kali Linux on this laptop. You can see its specs, just 1 GB of RAM and a Pentium processor. So let's get started. First, you'll need the Kali Linux ISO file, an 8 GB USB drive, and Rufus. Make sure to download the ISO file from the official Kali Linux website, and not from any third-party site. Also, if your architecture is 64-bit, download the 64-bit version. And if it's 32-bit, download the 32-bit version. First, insert the USB drive and open Rufus. Then, drag and drop the ISO file into Rufus and click the Start button. One more thing I forgot to mention. You need to have either an Ethernet or Wi-Fi connection on your PC otherwise. You won't be able to install Kali Linux. Additionally, if you are installing this operating system in a dual boot setup, make sure you have a partition of at least 50 GBB. I also recommend writing down the storage amount of this partition on a piece of paper to avoid any issues during installation. One eternity later. So now, the process in Rufus is complete, and I'll restart my PC and record the rest of the process using a hand cam. After restarting your PC, you'll need to access the boot menu. I have an HP laptop, so I access the boot menu with the F9 key. If you have a different brand, the key might be different, so check for your specific model. Once in the boot menu, select your USB drive to boot from. After the USB drive boots, you'll see several options. You can choose the first option, but you might encounter an error, as I did. If you face an error with the first option, select the second option. Next, you'll be prompted to choose your language. Select your preferred language and press enter. Then, choose your country and keyboard layout and press enter again. Once you press enter, the installation setup will start scanning your network hard drive. And after the scanning is complete, you will see two options, one for WAN and the other for Ethernet. If you have an Ethernet connection, select Ethernet. If you are using Wi-Fi, select WAN and press enter. The system will scan your network and you will see an interface prompting you to enter a host name. So enter your desired host name and press enter. The next prompt will ask for a domain name, which you can skip if you prefer. Then, you will need to create a username, and then it will prompt you to set a password. Remember to note down all the details you enter here, as you will need them later. Pay close attention to the video during this part. You will see four options. Select the last one. After this, several partitions will appear on the screen. You need to select the partition that is completely empty and has a size of around 30 GB. I recommend creating a separate partition in advance and noting down its storage amount on a piece of paper. This way, you can avoid accidentally selecting a partition that contains important data. Once you've identified and selected the correct partition, you can proceed with the installation process. So, I have a 48 GB partition that is completely empty so I will select it and press enter. Now, you need to choose delete partition option and press enter. After that, a free space partition will appear, which you need to select and then press enter again. Next, you need to select the second option. In the following step, you need to choose recommended option and it will automatically create the swap in ext4 partitions. Now, you need to select the finish partitioning option and then a pop-up will appear where you need to choose yes option and then the partitioning will start. One hour later. After this, it will ask you which software you want to install along with the OS. You can go with the default selected options, but if you encounter an error, you only need to select these three options and then press enter. It will then start installing the additional software, and this process will take a significant amount of time. So friends, after four to five hours of hard work, it has successfully installed, and now it is asking me to restart the PC. Once you restart, you will reach a boot menu where you can choose to boot into Windows, but for now, I will only select Kaylee Linux. Now, you need to enter the username and password that you noted down earlier. Alright, we have installed Kali Linux, and you can see it is working perfectly without any lag. Even though my PC only has 1 GB of RAM, it is still running smoothly. Now, let's check if Windows is still working properly. As you can see, Windows is still working perfectly, 
and everything is exactly where we left it, which means our PC has not been damaged at all, and everything is in its place. Alright friends, it looks like we've covered everything in this lengthy video, and it's time to wrap things up. If you have any questions or confusion about installing or using Kali Linux, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I'll make sure to reply to you within a few hours. And if you're looking for an OS that can run both Linux and Windows apps on just 1 GB of RAM, be sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now. I'll meet you there and guide you through that process as well.